Hi, this is Dr. Mustafa Khan. I am a board-certified orthopedic spine surgeon. If you as a patient are in discussion with your surgeon about undergoing any kind of a spinal surgery and you encounter the following six situations, you should probably hit the pause button and not sign up for surgery until your surgeon has addressed all of these concerns. So without further ado, and in no particular order, let's talk about it. If you get the feeling that your surgeon is being a little too pushy in trying to get you to sign up for surgery, you should ask your surgeon what the urgency is all about. The fact of the matter is that more than 90 or 95% of spine surgery in our country is elective, meaning that you as a patient get to decide if you're going to have surgery and when. The exceptions to this rule are unusual scenarios like cauda equina syndrome, which is a rare condition where, due to very severe compression of the nerves in your lower back, you can potentially become paralyzed unless you have surgery. Another example is if your spinal cord is severely compressed in the neck. In rare cases, this can also cause paralysis. Or if you have sustained a trauma, such as a fall or motor vehicle accident, and either a bone in the back is broken or the ligaments are ruptured. So in these situations, surgery may be unavoidable and in fact advisable. But if you don't have these unusual conditions, most likely surgery is an elective option, meaning that you as a patient get to decide if you are going to have surgery and when. When you're discussing surgery as an option, take good notes, go home, and really think about it, research it, and then set up a follow-up talk surgery appointment with your surgeon. Remember, you're about to make a big decision. Make sure that you're prepared. If your surgeon gives you a guarantee of a good outcome, it should give you pause. I always tell my patients that with spine surgery, as with any other surgery, in fact, there are no guarantees of outcome. For example, I cannot predict, and neither can any other surgeon, if you are going to be 90% better, 80% better, 100% better, 60% better, after you have completely recovered from spine surgery, which may take up to a year. So if a surgeon gives you a guarantee of good result, you should probably get a second opinion from another surgeon. Having said that, in fact, it is true that for the vast majority of patients, I would estimate that in the high 90% plus, most of patients are very satisfied with their surgical result. I always like to remind my patients that spine surgery may make you better, but it is unlikely to make you perfect. And this holds true whether you are having a small surgery like a microdiscectomy or a big surgery like a fusion. So you should be skeptical of any surgeon who guarantees you an excellent result. You should have realistic expectations. If your surgeon cannot explain to you the rationale for the surgery in simple and easy to understand terms, you should probably think twice about going ahead with the surgery. To you as a patient, the surgery should not be a mysterious process. Ask your surgeon, what is the goal of the surgery? Is it to remove a herniated disc, which is pushing against a nerve? Is it to remove a disc or a bone spur, which is compressing the spinal cord? Is it to straighten out the spine because you have scoliosis? You should always review your x-rays, MRI, CT scan, EMG, any other relevant test with your surgeon. Have your surgeon point out exactly where the herniated disc is. Have them point out exactly where the pinched nerve is. Have them point out where the bone spurs are that are going to be removed. If your surgeon is able to show you these abnormalities on the imaging studies, then you will be able to understand the rationale of the proposed surgery quite easily. If you have a detailed and thoughtful discussion with your surgeon about all of these matters, you will be very nicely prepared for your surgery, and you will be able to understand the goals of the surgery. Don't walk into getting a surgery without understanding why you need the surgery. If you have not had a detailed discussion with your surgeon about the potential risks of surgery, don't sign up for surgery yet. Ask your surgeon, what are the potential medical or anesthesia-related complications of surgery? What about potential surgical complications of surgery? What does the post-operative recovery look like? What if there is a complication? How is that going to be handled? What is the likelihood that if you have the surgery, you will need another surgery in the future?
What are the potential implications of the surgery on your future occupation, hobbies, activities of daily living? That is why I encourage my patients to have a detailed and thoughtful discussion about these issues before surgery because you want as few surprises after the surgery as possible. If your surgeon offers you a procedure and you get the impression that this surgery is a little too complicated considering the problem that is going to be fixed, you should be able to ask them why that is the case. For example, ask your surgeon, why do I need a laminectomy with a fusion? Why can't we just do the laminectomy without a fusion? Or why do I need a laminectomy and not a discectomy? Or why do I need a multi-level fusion instead of a simple one or two level fusion? Your surgeon should be able to give you a thoughtful, logical reason for why the more extensive surgery is better for you as opposed to a simpler procedure. It may be that the more extensive and seemingly complicated surgery is in fact the right answer for you, but you should be able to clearly understand why that is the case. The classic example is a patient who is offered an anterior plus posterior surgery, meaning surgery through two incisions, one in the front of the body and the other one in the back of the spine. Most of the time, the surgeon is able to give you a very good reason for why they chose one option over the other. After this discussion with your surgeon, you should come away from it feeling confident about your decision. If a surgeon is offering you a surgery which is a new technique, have them explain in simple terms why this new technique is superior to the tried and true standard technique. This is especially the case if the surgery involves devices which have not been in use for a long time. New devices are often heavily marketed by medical device manufacturers. Find out if your surgeon has a financial conflict of interest when it comes to using the new medical device. If your surgeon is proposing trying a new surgical technique or device, ask them what their experience has been with it. What are the rates of complications? And if there should be complications in the future, what are the options in that case? Your responsibility as a patient is to make the best possible decision for your health by doing your own due diligence. As a spine surgeon, my responsibility is to give you my very best. That is what this is all about. So I hope you found this information useful. Please share and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making these educational videos for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to share in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing from my viewers. Take care of yourselves, stay healthy. Thank you for watching and see you next time.